So, next up, we have something called map. Map is kind of like an object, but it's better. So, the most common problem you'd get in JavaScript is where some of these job just drove Java developers bonkers, right? Anytime you go var list and you say object, not array, right? Then you say var list sub cow, right? So you have a dynamic key, right, as a string. And then you have a dynamic value, whatever that is that you want it to be. You can say print the list.sup, and it'll tell you what it is. But Java developers, were, I feel so bad for picking on them, but they, they're so easy to pick on. You'd go list.length, right? And it would report in JavaScript zero, right? Because it's not really a list, okay? So you could do the same thing with this as an array, and it would still work. Because again, everything extends object. It doesn't matter if you do dynamic settings. So this would not treat the array as an indice. This would actually set a property dynamically on the object instance, right? It's not gonna actually set it at a sub location. That is not an indice. Indices are only numbers in JavaScript. Maps are different. Anytime I do this, the map can keep track of my dynamic sets via these operators. Because again, remember, Dart supports operator overloading. So it knows that I'm dynamically adding a property the way we use a map in Dart is we don't do object, we do map, right? So when I print it out in Dart, I'm setting dynamic properties, right? As I would normally an object, it actually has an accurate length. Now map has a lot of other useful functions. I want to talk about those right now. So let's go back to the documentation. There's obviously a lot to learn. So open the API, go to map. Down here, they have something called factory functions that allows you to create maps from other objects, right? So if you already have a map, you can actually create an existence one that has all the other key value pairs together. Now keep in mind, you're still gonna run into the deep clone problems where you have references, right? So by val, by ref, that's still up to you to keep track of. But from iterable and all that other stuff is there. It's wonderful, wonderful factory methods. But we're not concerned with that. We wanna know, is there anything in the map? Is it not empty, <laughs> right? What are the keys? Just give me a list of the keys, right? So when you do a for in loop and you're not actually interested in the value, you just want to know the keys. Because we already know the keys is an array, zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, whatever, right? What are the keys in the object? You don't know that until you iterate over it. Well, they provide you the keys right there. The actual length as an integer, right? It's there for you. The values that you can actually iterate over just the values, not the properties. So again, all kinds of wonderful things. And keep in mind, they have overloaded or overwritten, whatever you want to call it, the operator. So you can use the object as a key, a key value with a string, or some other data type. Really, really cool. Clear removes everything. So you can actually reutilize the object instance without having to create a new one, very similar to what you do in JavaScript. For performance reasons, oh, the garbage handler handle it, right? Map handles that for you, okay? And standard stuff, such as for each, for each not as many functional ways of iterating over it like the list. It does support iterables, so you can get them out and then use the list method. So even though all it has is very simple stuff like for each and put if absent, if you're looking for all the list ways of working with it, you can actually extract pretty quickly the values from it, which returns an iterable, right? And then you can do all the stuff you want to do to iterate over the values and blah, blah, blah. Now, the last thing I wanted to point out here is that you can define a maps value key pair with strong typing. So not everything has to be a string, right? It can be whatever you want. So for example, we're gonna change our map to say it's a map with a string, string. Now, again, test map. It doesn't matter if there is a comma or, or a space or not. It doesn't matter as long as you have that comma to designate the first position, the second position, okay? That's how maps work. They have a first position, which is the property or the key and the second property, which is the value, okay? So key data type, value data type. And again, whatever you set it to, it'll work. So as soon as I go test map, oh my goodness, equals two, it won't compile. It'll yell at you, give you a warning, and it'll say, look, you can't set that because that's not how our map works. So if you're trying to create very specific data types or map them to what you know you're getting from the server, the server side developers, whether Ruby, Python, Java, doesn't matter. They've already designated the data types that they're giving you back. You can make sure that Dart will help you code to them correctly, right? So you, if you know ahead of time what that structure is, you can map to it. So the compiler will help you work with the server side guys. Again, in my experience for 13 years, the number one issue is server side data gets in your system and it's whack, right? And you don't have any unit tests around your factories and everything else. The compiler, 
He's got your back. So, that is map. 